How's it going, folks? This is Liam Shai over at Pyramind, and the theme this month is the low end. And as such, I thought it would be appropriate to make a little sample pack here of some sub-hit effect sounds. So this drum rack and all of the samples are available for download, so definitely make sure to grab it. And today, I just want to talk real quickly about the sound design and sample pack workflow in Ableton Live. All right, so the first step is to create an instrument rack. And I think it's highly recommendable to use an instrument rack so that you can control all of your synth layers with a single MIDI note. Now for the actual layers here, I like to use a low, mid, and organic section. So if we just solo these here, I'm using sub boom bass simply on a sine wave to provide the low end power for the synth patch layers. Next, in the midsection, I've got Zebra. And I created eight patches, which are the foundation for each of these layers. On the top end, I use an organic layer. And this is Alchemy. Alchemy is a freaking amazing rompler. So if I go to the advanced section here, you can hear this mechanical startup. All kinds of great organic sounds, um, water sounds, nature sounds, clocks, um, you know, instruments. All kinds of great stuff there. And they're all based off of real recordings. So that brings in that extra element that you can't really achieve with synthesis alone. The workflow part comes across, as you can see, in my eight channels here. So basically, I design my, my collection of patches, resample, so I have the audio file, duplicate, freeze, and move on. So here you can see, same instrument rack, same instruments, but totally new patches, which I have sound design, uh, to be unique and interesting. So resample that, freeze, duplicate it, start over with the sound design, resample, freeze, duplicate, so on and so forth. So what I'm left with here is eight patches, which I'm really pretty happy with, that will serve as the foundation for the next step of the process. Now, I wanna talk about that, but first, a little bit of housekeeping. I do all of my destructive editing using RX3. And so here I'll go in and just adjust gain, do fade ins, fade outs where necessary, just to make sure that the samples are clean and there's no clicks or pops. Okay, so now it gets interesting. We move to the next step, which is where I bring in a tool called S-Layer or Slayer. Uh, now this is a reactor ensemble and the way that it works is by layering uh, up to eight samples at a time and allowing you to have control over certain parameters such as um, which samples are layered, the volume, the pitch, the pan, uh, and a few other techniques over here, which you can see uh, grain, stretch, filtering, so on and so forth. And basically uh, what I've done is just loaded up those, those eight core patches that I created specifically for this pack, which will serve as the foundation and then in addition, I loaded up some other samples which I had made previously for a pack called Future Trap and Glitch, which is available for sale at Sample Anatomy. Great website, tons of awesome samples. And I just wanted to bring in other core elements um, that I had created myself so that I, this pack has a very authentic feel. So uh, I load these core patches, combine them with uh, previous sounds that I've made, and literally, <laughs> If I just start clicking the randomize, you can quickly see that we start to get some really interesting combinations of sounds happening. So once I come up with some interesting combinations in Slayer, I resample them over here to uh, my resample two channel. So.
getting closer to the final result. Uh, so once these guys are resampled, I do a uh, little bit of mastering here. So uh, Kramer tape, amazing plugin, just adds a nice level of saturation, tape saturation. I use the Puig Child 670 just to fatten everything up. Then I take it over, uh, clean it, not too much, not too aggressively here, but a little bit of EQ just to cut off some unwanted low end, high end, and take out some of that muddiness in the middle. I then use the BX control to make sure everything below 250 hertz is in mono and just add a little bit of stereo width to the top end. And then of course, uh, the FabFilter Pro L, amazing limiter, uh, just to catch the transients and make sure that nothing's clipping. So once I've done that, kick it out, export it, right? Uh, and then you make your drum rack. So once I have those, those final samples, which have been exported, I drop them into each cell, and then I just apply some uh, uh, macro assignments to allow us to have a little bit of control. So if I just go ahead and record activate this channel, I can retune this, filter with resonance, and you can see these are the same color because they go together. A little bit of stereo spread, we can adjust the release here. And these three go together. And basically, if this is off, these two don't do anything. So if this is on, this is for the pitch envelope. Now we have the ability to go plus minus 48 semitones. And then you can adjust the, the attack of that as well. So a lot of fun there. Cool. Um, so I'm just going to recap this. The 10 step process is step one, create an instrument rack. Step two, load up with your layers. In my case, I used Rob Pappen, Sub Boom Bass, Zebra 2, and Alchemy. All amazing instruments. Step three, sound design party. Get in, get your hands dirty, make sounds from scratch, come up with interesting combinations. Um, step four, resample. Step five, clean up your samples, in my case using RX3. Of course, you can do this directly within Ableton as well. Uh, step six, yes, step six, load into S layer. Step seven, S layer party. So more samples, adjust parameters to taste, really just get in there and remix your stuff. Step eight, resample again. Step nine, final processing, so that's where the mastering rack came in, export. Step 10, create your drum rack, add macros to taste, and I guess optional step 11, upload to the internet and share with the world. Cool. Once again, this has been Liam Shy. Thanks so much for watching over here at Pyramind. We love you guys. Very much like to thank Pyramind for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool. And until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me, and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail. We, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.